this is gonna be a two camera operation because in this box I have a whole bunch of Commodore 64 motherboards because the Commodore 64 was released in 1982 and let me tell you a quick story about it IBM calls this a personal computer and says a person can afford it, yet it's over $1,500. Apple says computing is a revolution that can't be missed, but at $1,530 you could miss it. Atari says computers are now within reach. Well, the Commodore 64 has more built-in memory than the others, and it's under $600. So, while everyone else talks about the revolution that's coming, you can experience the revolution that's here. So this episode will be about the Commodore 64, one of my favorite retro computers. Also a nice occasion to celebrate the fact that my micro channel has passed 64 subscribers. The Commodore 64 was released in 1982 and Commodore stopped its production in 1994. That means 12 years of time to change the design, but for Commodore mainly 12 years to try to reduce the cost. One of the ways they did that was by changing the design and layout of the motherboards. Here are some of the revisions, like the 250469, the 326298, the 250466, the 250425, or the 250407. There are some rare examples of Commodore 64 motherboards, like this KU1419HB. It appeared in European silver labels. I wonder if in the pile I got, I will find a Super PLA. I haven't seen one yet, since I have never opened one of the Commodore 64Cs I have. But who knows, maybe they are all Commodore 64C motherboards. I got this from a guy that was saying that he was selling a part of his collection, so most of the time that means that they are selling uh, <laughs> the things that are not really the most valuable to them or the most uh, precious items. Uh, he said that he got this from, uh, per, uh, from a guy that was repairing Commodore 64s back in the day. So these are some motherboards that have been uh, stripped of their parts and I really like that it came in a Commodore 64 box and this held um, uh, MP 1224C printer the box says a whole bunch of paper Here they are. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three. Twenty-three Commodore 64 motherboards. Uh, for as far as I can see, one. C64C case, one Commodore 64 case, that seems to be sort of complete, I think, bunch of keyboards, I hope I can take these out without damaging, let's, well, they're a bit stuck. Oh, and there's even more here. Oh, pretty. Just to put the space bar back in, but first thing I pulled out is this pretty decent and pretty clean, I guess, C64C um, keyboard with the characters printed on top. Very nice.
another very nice Commodore 64C keyboard. Cool. Now let's see if we can take out motherboard. Yes. So this is the first motherboard I'm taking out. Overall, this is in a, I would say, the not like a pristine, but not bad shape. This is the revision two five zero four six nine. So let me check um, if it's in the list that I used here. And I stole those pictures for my presentation. Two four two five two five zero four four one. Yes. So this is a board from 1987, it says. Um, yeah, so it's uh, 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 used in the Commodore 64C. So I want to see if I can store these in a better way than they are in this giant box. So it was difficult to find the right um, anti-static bags. Uh, the boards are longer than a, a standard motherboard. So I got a bunch of these A4 anti-static bags. So, number one, welcome. I have a bit of a cheat sheet. Yeah, so the uh, CIA chip. So this is the CPU. That's great that it still has that. Then I think, well, I expect these to be the character ROM. This is another CIA chip. So CIA, CIA, and this is the CPU. Okay, great. Put it aside. Moving on. So which one shall we pick? They're all stuck in there so here we have the cover of a Commodore 64 c with a label it's a bit dirty so now i think i should be able to get out some of the it's a little bit more easy this is another 2504-69, so Commodore 64C uh, motherboard. These caps look very crusty. But still we have the CPU, we have the Super PLA, some RAM chips. I think these are RAM chips still. We are missing the... I gotta check what this, this chip was. Never mind, I don't think I have to look it up. I think this is what... Um, help the video chip and this help the SID chip. It appears that the this CIA chip was not desoldered but it was uh, cut out. So I'll probably take some time with my desoldering station to take those legs out uh, later and make it look a little bit more normal because overall this motherboard doesn't look too bad. It's missing the fuse. Didn't check if the other one Came with the fuse, and I really wanted um, this this lot of motherboards uh, because I, to be honest, uh, there were some uh, pi th there were some pictures on the ad. Maybe I can show them. Uh, of course, where you saw some boards that were like uh, almost completely uh, stripped of their parts, but there were also some chips I saw. But this is a great way of expanding uh, my spare parts uh, bin because. Uh, these buttons and the joystick ports and maybe some of the capacitors if they're nice cartridge ports overall these whole boards they're they're nice to preserve and they're great for learning electronics in my opinion you've been intriguing me so <laughs> I wonder. So this is what I, I was talking about that, that that came with the pictures and that it had a, some of them were like missing every part. Well, I don't know what happened to this board. Oh my god!
<laughs> I don't know how they desoldered those chips, but I, oh, <laughs> some of the they're like loose. Looks like they just burned and popped out. One of my goals uh, with this project, with with the with this box filled with Commodore 64 motherboards, is to maybe fully strip one and then frame it so I can hang it on my wall and display it. And what better way to use a, a motherboard uh, that on the front looks decent, I guess, but on the back is like damaged beyond repair. It looks just sad. But I think if I tackle this with my desoldering iron and take it on the legs, remove these, this exploded capacitor, and we can even salvage some of the connectors. Cartridge port seems to be fine. And this is a 250425, which is a very common board, I think. It's a little bit more uh, cost reduced and this is one of the boards where the SID chip switch places with the PLA so I think the SID chip is here and the PLA goes here. Uh, another Commodore 64C motherboard I think, yeah the 250469. This one uh, there's no super PLA, there's no CPU, there's no sit and Vic but overall nothing too bad of a shape although this could maybe use a clean I think we're gonna find a lot of Commodore 64 C motherboards in this pile So this is the CIA. Yeah, so the, the other one was missing the CIA, the, the Vic, and the sit. another CIA Super PLA. This one has an old label saying, in Dutch, does nothing. So they were like, let's salvage some of the chips. Overall, I would say in a decent shape. Four Commodore 64 C motherboards. Let's see if we can find another type of motherboard. Let's see what this is. Another 469. Hey, this one is missing the cartridge port. So no CIA, no SID, no. And this is a Commodore branded Super PLA. And for the rest it's only the RAM chips. And a broken off thingy for the uh, disk drive port, I would say. Or the video board. And it's revision 3 of the 469 motherboard. Surprises me how bad these caps on all the C64C boards look. Oh, this one says it gives signal, so maybe we can populate these and see if it does. I have some video out. So we have a 469, another 469. I think these are all going to be the Commodore 64C motherboards. And that this was the only other one, the 425. This one has the CIA, this one doesn't, no SID chip. 
I would be surprised to see if we find any C chips today. No uh, CPU, no character ROMs, no CIA, CIA character ROMs, Super PLA, and another CIA chip, I think. <laughs> It's interesting to see how many revisions even the 469 board had, which I think is the latest. Um, this is revision A and this is revision 4. Um, these both of these are in a knackered state. So we have a they have no fuse, all of them have no fuse. This one has a broken socket, this one has a weird so different sockets, D this capacitor is hanging on. Uh, by one leg. So let's see if we can Remove that because it looks Very corroded by the way you might be wondering well, why did you buy so many of these knackered boards? Well, they were about two bucks a piece I think and I just Love looking at this kind of stuff. I expected there to be a little bit more variation than just them being only the short boards. What I do wonder is them saying it came from a repair shop. <laughs> I wonder what kind of tool the guy was using to desolder his chips because I've never seen such an ugly job of desoldering chips and when I use my my own station which was very cheap. I get beautiful results. I wonder if they were brought in like this or if, if the repair guy like I think this board suffered some abuse. So here we have the interestingly we have revision A and revision 4 again um, this time both of them are in a little bit nicer condition I see a CPU I see two PLAs um, but missing the usual and uh, got the same treatment as most of the other motherboards is that where sockets are placed chips were removed and I don't get why they chose to just leave the legs in but I think this is a removed socket that was just yanked out or something Another revision A and a revision three. So this one says that it gives some signal, and this one is written kernel. So maybe something to do with the operating system. So we have the two CIA chips on both of these. Uh, one character ROM and one character ROM here. Uh, these were socketed and here they weren't so they're on this board there still are. Three chips here, three chips here. Both of these boards uh, look pretty nice uh, and they seem to be both for PAL which is expected. I was wondering why they all looked a bit weird the boards but that's probably because they were on top of each other uh, for maybe years. So I'll put this one to the side so we can test that one later but still I need to find this chip I think to run it. 
because it's got a PLA, it doesn't, and it needs a VIG chip, of course, to have the video. Moving on. So we have revision 3 and we have revision 4 here. So of course interesting that where the normal PLA in the bread bin C64s that most of the time they are the part of failure but that, that the super PLA as these are called are much more uh, reliable. Here we have two boards, they're both revision 4 of the 469, uh, different color PCB though. Interesting to see, this one has a label that says it. this one does nothing, that's a very clean board overall I think. Uh, of course the socketed chips have been taken away. Uh, this one has a CPU. CPU, CIAs, the Super PLAs, which is the most resilient Commodore chip, I think, of all time, judging by this pile of knackered boards. The clock crystals are also, I, I noticed that a lot of them still have the clock crystal, which is nice, I guess. This has two labels. This one has two labels. The 251913 is bad, it says. So that means that one of the character ROMs, I think, is is uh, not behaving as it should. And then here it says 487795. If I google this I cannot find anything on it so I wonder what that means. This one does nothing. Well it looks quite nice. <laughs> I found something interesting. This is actually really cool. And uh, I'm really gonna see if I can make this look nice again. Actually finding this makes the whole box worth everything, even with the keyboards. This is a Commodore 64C, well, a knackered one, but it's a Commodore 64C in the bread bin case. This is one of the Commodore 64 designs I didn't have yet and that I was looking for. The keyboard seems to be fine, case needs a lot of retro bright and is really damaged on the bottom. I don't know what's inside. Keyboard and the LED are still present. I think it will be a lot of fun to see if I can restore this Commodore 64C. And see if we can get it into working order. So great find, really happy with this one. Another keyboard from someone that really modded their 64 a lot. Actually quite happy with this one because I didn't have a keyboard yet that I could steal from. But this one I think will make a really nice parse keyboard cover, I'm not sure what to do with it, but we'll get a free power LED. And maybe I can print a th stop, but of course since the, the instant delete key is not here, I have a, another keyboard that needs a spring. Nice. Moving on to the next. 
we're nearing the end and these are two four six nine revision three and four and this one is they're pretty much the same i think we have two cpus two super plas um a cia and a cia just like the other one this is a b so this probably was a cia b as well don't know what happened to the character uh, roms or what's yeah i think this is the character rom or a kernel i'm not sure but it's heavily coated in solder and it's not aligned with the board not sure if i can show it's not aligned if this if these boards really came from a repair shop i really wonder <laughs> how the happy the customers were with <laughs> the overall repair experience because i've seen a lot of weird soldering job i'm really bad at soldering i think because i don't do it a lot this person i think attacked some of the motherboards with blow torches well you just have gotten could have gotten a, a, a proper desoldering iron for i think the same price as a blowtorch i'm not sure i was looking online to see if i could find some pictures of a repair shop for commodore 64s but no i couldn't This is a revision 4 and this is also a revision 4. Uh, the difference between the two of them is pretty obvious is that, that this one has two, two chips on board and this one has a lot more chips. Um, this one writes, uh, here they write uh, that uh, among other things there's some defected RAM chips. So these are defected RAM chips. Uh, we have a CPU, a Super PLA, even here the Super PLA is removed. We have a CIA, uh, two CIAs, and a character ROM again. A weird thing done to one of those. I don't get why you would lift the chip off the board and then resolder it. Maybe they could like cut off the legs of a previous chip and connected another one to it. Which really makes no sense. <laughs> this one had some heat. This one had some heat, I think. <laughs> I think this is a nice candidate. Oh my god. Mr. Blowtorch. You would assume that mm, to do a thing like that to a board is that it has a broken trace somewhere. Maybe this was in a fire or something. I think this is number two with the other board, the 425 or something. Yeah, the 425 to just take off everything and frame it. So this is a revision 4, which says that it gives a signal. But that there's something with the RAM, RAMs, RAMs. So we have a take a look into that. Overall, this board is also in a nice condition. I would say that the, the capacitors, which and some of them were a bit bad. Keyboard connector seems fine. Proper power switch. And no, 
another C64 case. No power LED though, but that's not a huge problem. Thanks for watching.